system. In today's lecture, we will be talking about uh, the mismatch and partial shedding in series connected solar PV cell. So, uh, let us start. You see that uh, to use a solar PV cell effectively, a solar PV cell, we normally connect them in series or parallel. These cells are connected either in series or in parallel to obtain meaningful power out of them. Okay. Uh, to enhance the voltage handling capability <coughs> of the uh, cell, we, not, we connect them in series and to enhance uh, uh, the, the current handling capability, we connect them in parallel. Okay, and normally the solar panels that are available in market, they actually consist of a number of solar cells within them which are connected in series. So within this panel, we have the, these cells, cell 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and they all are connected in a series. Okay, something like this. And uh, normally, uh, uh, 36 cells or 48 cells or 60 cells and even sometimes 72 cells are connected in series within a panel depending on uh, the rating of the panel okay so let us now uh, and try to analyze the issue which comes when these cells are connected in series so in this lecture we will be focusing on uh, uh, the problems that occur when the cells are connected in series. Okay, first we will talk about the mismatch. That means when the two cells that are connected in series, they don't have the similar uh, uh, IV characteristic at a particular insulation and temperature. Okay, there is a mismatch in the IV characteristic. And that mismatch may happen uh, because of uh, multiple reasons because of the uh, uh, because of uh, since you know that uh, in a, uh, a mathematical model of a PV cell it looks somewhat like this okay there's a resistance here and a resistance here so in during the course of manufacturing uh, the value of this resistance RS or this RSH may be different for different cells. Okay, so that may cause a change in, uh, and even uh, the, the 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 photo current IPH and uh, this PN junction, this diode. Okay, so overall there may be changes in during the manufacturing process between two cells although they look identical there there might be some difference in the IV characteristic at same insulation and temperature condition so we would be discussing about them uh, one by one so let us start uh, first of all let me try to draw the IV characteristic of a PV panel PV cell rather so uh, a PV cell, the characteristic actually stress in uh, three quadrants. Okay, for an ideal PV cell, ideal PV cell, the characteristic looks somewhat like this. So this on the y-axis is IPV and on the x-axis is VPV. Okay, IPV is the current that is being drawn from the panel 
and VPV is the voltage that is appearing across the panel. So ideal PV characteristic. So that means we are neglecting uh, the losses occurring because of the presence of this RS and RSH. Okay. Okay. So this is the deviation from the ideal characteristic in an IV in a PV cell because of presence of uh, RS and RSH. This is because of uh, RSH, the shunt resistance and uh, this uh, extra slope is because of the series resistance RS. Okay, fine. And uh, there is another region here. Uh, let me extend it. And uh, this is uh, uh, because of the breakdown. And even in, uh, okay, so in ideal case, there won't be this breakdown region. Okay, fine. So now uh, it actually has uh, three regions of operation. So in the first quadrant, this is actually generating power. PV panel or PV cell is generating power because the voltage and current, the voltages and current are positive. Any point on this curve which actually have positive volt voltage and positive current. So that means the product of the two would be positive that means it is generating power while if we are here anywhere here in this region then uh, the the current the voltage the voltage the voltage will now be negative isn't it although the current is positive here but the voltage is negative so that means the product of the two will result in a negative power that means the power is being dissipated dissipated by the panel okay similarly is the case here if we are here somewhere here then the current is negative okay although this is uh, rarely the case normally problem in mismatching and partial shedding happens when the IV characteristic of a particular cell moves into this uh, this second quadrant okay so we will look into uh, the detail of it uh, what happens okay so let us now consider uh, let me start with uh, uh, two cells they are connected in series we consider two cells which are connected in series so let i1 is the current flowing here v1 is the voltage that is appearing across this pan a cell and uh, v2 is the voltage occurring appearing across this uh, panel uh, and similarly uh, say i1 i2 is the current here entering this point and then finally i is the current out of the combination of these two cells and v is the voltage that is appearing at the output of the combination of these two cells which are in series so v is uh, basically v1 plus uh, v2 and since the cells are in series so i is equal to i1 and that is equal to i2 is it fine okay for some uh, insulation g Now, the problem is, say we first take the case when there is a mismatch in the IV characteristic, okay. So we have got two panels which have got different IV characteristic. So one of the panel is exhibiting an IV characteristic uh, like this, okay and say we have uh, another panel which is exhibiting an IV characteristic somewhat like this so we are basically considering that there is a difference in uh, the ISC ISC1 uh, and ISC2 
of the two panels. Although the VOC, this is the VPV and this is uh, IPV on the Y axis. So, uh, and VPV for both of them is almost same. VP1 and VPV2 is almost, sorry, VOC1 and VOC2 is almost same. Okay. So, if that is the case and there is a difference, large difference between the currents, ISC1, ISC2, the short circuit currents of the two panel because of uh, the, the manufacturing or even if you are using two different types of cells and you are connecting them in series then definitely they are going to have different ISCs. So if that is the case what effect will it have when we are connecting the two cells in series. So the voltage now the resulting characteristic resulting IV characteristic how it will look like. So you see uh, uh, so the voltage is the sum of the two voltages so you start from this point 0 and you move till this point ISC2 one more interesting thing to note here is that uh, the current ISC2 okay is the maximum current or short circuit current that is uh, passing through the cell uh, cell 2 okay this one so if that is the case and then they are connected in series so <clears throat> so this is the current that is also passing through the first panel v1 okay so let try, let me try to uh, draw the combined iv characteristics so this is the point voc1 plus voc2 okay so let me try to draw it so till this point okay till this point so this these points are basically v1 plus v2 and current is varying from 0 to isc so in and at isc2 we have uh, the voltage uh, v2 so this is V2 curve, this is V1 curve, so only V2 remains and V1 reduces to 0. So what about the curve beyond this point? Beyond this point. Okay. What is the curve beyond this point? So you see uh, uh, how to obtain it. So easy way to obtain is you see that V is equal to V1 plus V2. Isn't it? Let me uh, erase from here. Okay, so V1 plus V2 is equal to uh, let me take another color, red one. So V is equal to V1 plus V2. Okay, that means V1 is equal to uh, uh, we are interested in finding out the ISC for the combination. Okay, we are interested in finding out the ISC of the combined cells V1 and V2. So, uh, uh, so that, that means ISC common will have a value at the sum V1 plus V2 when this becomes equal to zero. Is it it? When it touches this uh, uh, y-axis. So, we, when v becomes equal to 0, when v becomes equal to 0, then v1 will be equal to minus v2. Fine. So, if I try to draw minus v2 curve here, so minus v2 curve, it looks somewhat like this. Okay. This is minus V2. And when V1 is equal to minus of V2. So I told you that this could be extended on the V1 could be extended on the yes, on this side, on the second quadrant. Okay. Uh, let me not uh, sorry. 
Okay. Keep it here. Okay, so this is the point wherein V1 is equal to minus of V2. And you could easily see that this voltage is basically a negative voltage minus of Vt. Okay, so this is the point uh, ISC combined. So you can actually uh, uh, let me take another color blue one. So this was the I characteristic of combined cell B1 and B2. Okay, it is converging at this point ISC common. Okay, now the issue is that the issue is that. Uh, we have till till this point there is no issue till IC2 there is no issue but once the current is increasing beyond IC2 and till IC common the voltage that is appearing across V1 is negative isn't it so whichever line you curve you you trace this and bring it here, you see that it will touch some point on IV characteristic which is negative. Okay. So that means, and if you, uh, and the current is positive. So if you multiply the current and voltage, you will find that the power that will be uh, expression is negative for V1. That means that v, uh, the, the cell V1 is basically uh, dissipating power okay uh, said, uh, rather it is uh, uh, getting heated up okay so it is not generating power it is rather absorbing power and it gets heated up so this is an issue in uh, uh, in solar pv cell connected in series and this problem is called hot spot hot spot formation So in hot spot formation, the particular cell which has got lesser IC, it gets heated up and in some cases to the point when it gets permanently dashed. So that needs to be avoided. Okay. Okay. Similarly, uh, so I hope you understand what is the problem when we are connecting to cells in series and uh, in order to enhance the power handling capability definitely but uh, when they are having different IV characteristics okay at a particular insulation and temperature so this is the problem hotspot formation problem is there in uh, instead of generating power the uh, the panel which is uh, actually having a lower IAC it is behaving as load and it is dissipating power and it gets heated up okay so we will talk about the solution in a while let us now see when the IV characteristic is a bit different okay and uh, say let me erase this erase these all these things and let us uh, 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 say that now the IC for the two cells are actually uh, same but uh, the VOC is different the VOC is different so let us see how what will happen then so we have uh, a cell which has got this IV characteristic somewhat like this then we have uh, another cell which has got IV characteristic looks somewhat like this so VOC is different so VOC uh, VOC 1 and VOC 2 okay so in that case if I try to draw if I try to draw the combined characteristic then combined characteristic again it will be of the same form so it will look somewhat like this somewhat like this 
but the problem is not very peculiar in this case because the current the the short circuit current in the two cells are almost similar almost similar okay so this problem of uh, hot spot formation will not be significant or insignificant in case when the when the short circuit current so the two cells are same at a particular insulation temperature why there is a difference in the open circuit voltage okay so the ie characteristic looks somewhat like this but there still is a problem that when you try to obtain a uh, work uh, with uh, the combination of these two cells the maximum power point so maximum power point uh, is at knee point we know that it is at knee point so it may be possible that the cell with lower voc uh will be generating lesser power compared to what it can generate okay otherwise there is no issue of hot spot formation in this case fine so by discussing these two cases two extreme cases the first case was when there is different in ic in the two cells and the second case was when there is difference of voc in the two cells so uh, we have actually uh, taken up two cases so the isc is much different in the two cells when there is a case of partial shading the similar thing happen although characteristic may be same but because of uh, the difference in the shading pattern of the two cells we might have difference in isc okay that means the sunlight that is falling on these two cells is different so uh, i1 might be receiving heavy sun and because of some reason i2 uh, sorry uh, cell 2 is not receiving sufficient sunlight so maybe say some some uh, leaf or something it falls on it and it gets shaded so amount of sunlight that is falling on it it reduces significantly and we know that isc of a particular cell it depends heavily on the insulation g so we could see that we have arrived at the same problem in which two cells which are connected in series and they are having very different isc so that means the problem of hot spot formation in case of uh, uh, partial shading is quite significant quite significant so we have to take up this case why in the second case uh, is the case when uh, there is a difference in temperature between the two cells which uh, actually uh, is not uh, a, a practical case because the cells uh, cannot have very different temp operating temperatures uh, when they are operating in the same environment and they are located near to each other okay so this case uh, also we have discussed and we have also seen that although there might be difference in temperature still the effect uh, uh, is uh, of difference in temperature is not significant pertaining to the hot spot formation okay so we focus on this issue in which there is difference in ic of the two cells because of the difference in insulation okay so let me uh, take up a new page and now we will discuss how we can avoid hot spot formation so what is done to avoid this problem okay ha huh, one more thing i would like to mention here is that Uh, when two cells are connected in series, one important thing happens that if there is difference in temperature, one thing I told you that this hot spot formation problem is there. Another problem is that another problem is that uh, uh, yes. So one of the cell is not producing any power, rather it is. rather it is consuming power generated by the other cell okay 
So that means we are, we are losing power. So we have to come up with some way by which we can avoid this problem. Okay. So say for example, one of the cell is receiving 100 watt per meter square insulation, other is receiving 500 watt per meter square insulation, then definitely the difference of IAC would be significant in the two cases. Okay. So how to avoid this problem? So what is done? A diode is connected in anti-parallel to each of these diodes, each of these pieces. Okay. So this panel it looks somewhat like this. So we have a diode here and there is a resistor, there is a resistor here also. So a diode in anti-parallel to this diode is connected here. Okay, and this is called bypass diode. Bypass diode. Okay, so what is the function of this bypass diode? As I had told you that uh, in a cell, so this is the IV characteristic and uh, so once you add this, the IV characteristic of this, now the combined, this combined P panel and this, uh, this diode, it now changes to this. Okay. And this is very less, 0 0.7. Why is it so? Let me tell you what happens. So once uh, a, a panel which is shaded, okay, so and it is connected in series with another panel. So as soon as the current it uh, goes above the ISC of this shaded panel, what will happen? The voltage now appearing appearing across this earlier it was plus and this was minus. So once the current IAC goes above uh, the current that is flowing through the combination of the uh, cells. If it becomes more than this IAC, the shaded panel short circuit current, then the voltage that was appearing, the voltage that was appearing was becoming negative. Okay. That means this voltage becomes negative. So as soon as this happens, now this diode starts conducting. Okay. Earlier since it was reverse biased, this was plus and this was minus, so this diode was not in picture although it was connected in the uh, across the solar PV cell, but it was not in picture until the value of the current flowing through the uh, panel was less than IC. But once it becomes greater than IC, then the polarity across this diode it becomes forward bias plus here and minus here so it starts conducting that means the current now that was coming let me draw one more cell here so this is the healthy cell okay so this healthy cell was carrying current and say uh, this current will now won't go into this cell, rather it will be bypassed and whole current will flow through this diode and then to the load like this. Okay, so no current will flow through this part as soon as the current through the uh, the, the, the panel, the, the combination of the panel, it becomes greater than. I see, I see the short circuit current of this panel, uh, sorry, this cell when the insul insulation is uh, was 500 watt per meter square. Okay, is it fine? So you could see that we have actually avoided the uh, hot spot formation problem by by passing the cell, and this now diode conducts. And in this in this part, this diode is not conducting because it has got this polarity. Okay. 
So, so what happens if I try to draw the IV characteristic now so of the combined panel? Let me draw it here itself. So now, uh, now what happens? Uh, the combined characteristic it will look somewhat like this. It will come here till this point, and from this point it will move like this. Okay. So, this part of the characteristic basically is because of this diode characteristic, this characteristic which gets added up to the uh, partially shaded cell characteristic. Okay, earlier the characteristic was like this of the cell complete characteristic, but since we have added the bypass diode now, this, this diode characteristic overtakes the characteristic of the PE cell, the shaded cell. So that means now the combined characteristic will look somewhat like this. It is coming from here and from here going here. So this is V1 plus V2 and this part will be this say V1 is shaded. So only V2 and plus this one, this part, the diode voltage VD, rather minus of VD will be this part. Okay, I hope you do understand how the IV characteristic now looks like. And similarly, if we have more than two cells and they are receiving different insulation, so and if we connect a bypass diode to each one of them, okay, then what will happen? We will have and say they are getting different insulations. One is getting 1000 watt per meter square, the other one was getting 800 watt per meter square, other was third one was getting say 500 watt per meter square. In that case, so the characteristic would look somewhat like this. Something like step wave. Okay. So three points are there now. And consequently, if I try to draw the power curve, okay, you will find that the power will have three peaks, something like this. Okay, it will have three peaks. I think it will move from here and uh, sorry for not having a clear drawing anyway so it will have three peaks a global peak and two local peaks so this is also a problem associated with partial shading that uh, now we have to think of some smart algorithm which is going to find out the global peak in this multimodal curve of the solar PV as uh, the panel in which has combination of uh, cells okay and uh, and uh, how we have avoided the uh, hotspot formation you could see that now uh, uh, the losses in losses in the losses uh, sorry losses has reduced significantly in the PV cell. This is the loss in the shaded PV cell. PV cell. While uh, this is the loss in the diode. The, sh the sh by bypass diode. Earlier, what was the loss? Earlier, say this was the point. So this was the loss. Huge loss. So we have reduced the loss significantly in the partial shaded cell by addition of a bypass diode. So I hope you have understood the concept of uh, adding bypass diode to avoid this hot spot uh, uh, formation in a PV cell which is shaded. But in practical case, we do not add a bypass diode across each of the cell. Okay. 
So it is not that we connect bypassed diode across each of cell in a in a panel. A panel consists of say 60 cells, okay, or say 48 cells, 12 cells, one, two, three, and so on. 12 cells in one uh, one a column. 12 cells are there. Then similarly, these are again connected to 12 cells here. Then 12 are here and so on. So there are four uh, rows. So 12 cells in series and there are four rows. So in all there are 48 cells. Okay. Uh, sorry, four columns. I'm sorry, four columns are there. And there are 12 rows. So in all there are 48 cells. So it is not that each of the cell is connected with the bypass diode. Rather, uh, in this uh, two, uh, say 24, we make a club these 24 cells in one and connect one bypass diode across this 24 and we club these 24 again and add a bypass diode to the combination of these 12 series uh, 24 series connected cells so 24 cells here and 24 cells here they are each of them are having a bypass diode to serve or there may be higher number of bypass diode say at times if uh, manufacturer use three bypass diode in a, a single panel okay so that increases again the uh, efficiency of the panel under partial shading condition so in this case if any of the cell in a particular group this is group one say this is group one and this is group two so if any one cell or multiple cells in a particular group they get shaded then this uh, entire uh, combination of 24 cells which are in series get bypassed with the help of this diode and similarly is the case here okay is it fine and thereby we can uh, not only reduce uh, uh, the problem of uh, hot spot formation in pv panel we can actually also uh, enhance the power output because, because if, if all these 48 cells would have been in series although they are in series and there would not have been any bypass diode then what would have happened even presence of partial shedding on a single cell would have lead to zero output say this uh, one cell is completely uh, shaded so IAC for it reduces to zero say for example okay so the entire power output becomes zero because of this cell and this cell gets heated up beyond uh, a point which causes irreparable damage to this cell okay so that's all for uh, now thank you for watching this video we will be talking about uh, parallel connected solar PV cells and effect of mismatching and uh, partial shading in those connections. Thank you.